In a previous video here at eFix, we looked at the installation of this beautiful PremSpec heater from their Ascot range, and we saw it was a very, very smart bit of kit. However, the time has come now to hook it up to the mains because previously we just had it plugged in on the 13 amp plug there. So in this video, we're gonna look at the installation of this lovely Pitax cable, this twin and CPC that we'll be using to supply our heater with. So some of the things I really like about the Pitax cable, obviously it's BASEC approved, which means that you know you're getting the very best quality to the highest standard. Also Pitax offer next day delivery on their cable, which is really helpful. And also what's great is it comes with this really nice thick drum on here. So this cardboard here is nice and sturdy, not flimsy. So you know that's not gonna come flying off and leaving you with the electrician's worst nightmare, a drum of cable without the cardboard end on it. However, what we're gonna be thinking about specifically is the premature collapse of this wiring system in this installation. Now, one of our favorite regulations in the 18th edition was regulation 521.10.202, which states that wiring systems shall be supported such that they will not be liable to premature collapse in the event of a fire. Now, in this video, we're not gonna debate the exact meaning of those words. We're not gonna think about what premature collapse means. We're not gonna talk about all the various different facets of that. What we're gonna be looking at are solutions to this problem. How do we prevent our cables from collapsing prematurely? Well, we've got a number of solutions that we're gonna look at in this video, so let's get to it. So there's really three main obstacles that we need to overcome when it comes to the premature collapse of the wiring system in this particular installation. The first of these is that we're gonna be installing the Pitax Twin and CPC along the front face of this truss here. And as you can see, there's very little in the way of additional support here. So. If a fire was to break out and we just used plastic clips along here, those clips would melt, the cable would hang down quite badly and could potentially entangle a firefighter. So we're gonna to have to overcome that somehow. The other thing that we need to think about is where we've got the cable coming down the wall inside a piece of plastic trunking. Again, it's plastic trunking. And if a fire breaks out, then that's just gonna melt and the cable again is gonna fall off the wall. It's gonna be hanging there, potentially ready to entangle a firefighter trying to make his way through this room. And the third area, and this is a controversial one, is we've got to think about the existing cables that are already here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tackle these one at a time and see some of the different solutions that we've got to these problems. So I've got my cable laid out along the route that we're gonna be taking it down, and it's just a matter now of tacking it in place and making sure that it's properly supported. So this gives us an opportunity to talk about the first solution that we've found for this problem. So the first solution is the Thorsman fire rated steel cable clip from Schneider Electric. These are absolutely brilliant because they're really simple to install. In fact, they're just like a normal clip, which we've all installed thousands and thousands of in our time, I'm sure. But instead of being made out of plastic, which will melt in the event of a fire and release the cable, this is made out of steel and it's completely compliant with the regulations. So you can install this and know that it's gonna support your cable in the event of a fire. So I think that's really good. Now, obviously in terms of distancing and spacing and the number of steel against plastic that you use, that's gonna fall down to your engineering judgment. You've gotta make sure that should this drop down, it's not going to cause any entanglement issues for firefighters during the course of their activity. So we're going to install this here and see what that looks like. So let's have a go. So it's very simply a matter of just offering the clip up into the position that you want to get it in and then holding it in place so that you don't accidentally drop it and then just a matter of giving it a little tosh and then it goes and as you can see that has really gripped that really quite nice and tightly actually as well as a plastic clip would do so we can be sure now that should a fire break out along here that is not going to melt and the cable is not gonna drop down from this position. So I'll tack a few more of these in and we'll be away. Okay, so we've got the cable nice and neatly installed on the truss above our heads there. And now we're looking at how we're going to secure the cable as it comes down the wall in the plastic trunking. Now, traditionally, the trunking would be screwed onto the wall and then you would simply put the lid on and walk away. Nice, neat job, happy days. Of course, the challenge we've got now is that if a fire was to break out in this area, then the lid of this trunking and even the body of the trunking would melt and this whole thing could just flop forward quite easily. And the cable coming down the wall is one that's really dangerous to firefighters because they will stick to the side of the room as they go into a burning building. And so this cable being here, if it's flopped forward off the wall, is kind of in a prime position really for causing entanglement. And we really wanna make sure that that doesn't happen. So how can we make sure that in the event of a fire, this cable doesn't collapse prematurely? Well, 
We're going to look at a number of different options coming down this trunking. But before we start thinking about the actual clips and fixings themselves, we want to think about how we're going to attach those to the wall. So let's have a look at that. Now there's been lots of debate about whether or not you can use plastic wall plugs when it comes to installing a fire rated fixing into a surface. We're not about to enter into that debate here. We're simply going to look at an alternative and the alternative is the wall dog by Dewalt or Dewalt if you pronounce it wrong. So the Dewalt wall dog is a fantastic fixing. It's designed to screw directly into lots of surfaces, including brick and block. Now, obviously, we're going to need to put a pilot hole into a hard substrate like that. So if you're drilling into brick or block, you need to drill a 5 mil hole, according to the instructions, and that will then allow this to be driven directly into that material. So no plastic wall plug required, and that's going to go straight in there and give a really nice solid fixing. These have been tested up to 120 minutes in a fire rated situation uh, with 20 kilo weights hanging off them so they're pretty solid uh, and we can have a look at the different types that are available here as well so you can see we're looking at all one length in this video this is a 32 mil although you can also get 50 mil and 70 mil uh, lengths as well and in this case we're looking at the different heads so this is a countersunk head with a silver finish on the top there we've also got a countersunk version that has a white head on the top of it there so if you're putting that somewhere visible you might want to put the white one on we've also got a pan head uh, screw that has a white head also so we can pop that down there and finally we've got a pan head with a silver head on there so we can pop that there so those are the fixings that are available as well as a couple of extra lengths in certain versions but what are we going to be fixing to the surface? So we're going to look at a number of different fire rated fixings. First of all, we've got the cable safe from Illumino Ignis. So this is designed to be used with fire rated cables, uh, but we're going to install one in here to see what that looks like and how it installs and performs. So you can see the simple principle there. We're just going to fix that onto the back of the trunking through that hole there. And then we're going to fold these wings over in order to hold it in place. So we're getting a little bit closer to the old buckle clips that will bring a tear to many a misty eye of the perhaps more mature generation of electricians. We've then got a couple of fixings that we're going to be looking at from D-Line as well. So we've got the spring clip. So that's uh, another one that we'll be using and having a look at. You can see that a little bit closer there. That is going to be installed again into the back of the trunk in and the idea is that that sits over the cable and just holds it back in place and it's kind of in tension so that it will uh, press back against the cable and hold it nice and securely. So that is the spring clip from D-Line. And then finally, we're going to look at the F-Clip 50 from D-Line as well. Now, I know what you're thinking. That is massive. There's no way that's going to fit into the back of the trunking here. Well, you're quite right. That's not what this is designed for for this size of trunking, although it can go in bigger sizes of trunking, which is really good. And we'll have a little look at how that works a little bit later on. Again, getting even closer to the old uh, buckle clip there. So that's going to be interesting to see how well that installs. So let's start installing some of these clips and seeing what they look like. Okay, so the first fixing that we're going to install into our trunking here is the cable safe clip from Illumino Ignis. So we're just going to slip that into the back of the trunking, just kind of give it a little squeeze. And what's nice is it's a nice snug fit in there. So it just holds itself in place. It doesn't slide down the trunking once you've installed it. And then I'm going to get my Dewalt wall dog and just screw this in. There's a five millimeter hole in the wall that I've already pre-drilled and I'm just going to screw this in and it really does bite really nice and tightly into the wall there once that's in. There we go. So that's a nice tight fixing now. And then it's simply a matter of just popping the cable inside there and then just folding these little tabs over so that they hold the cable in place. Like so, as I say, these were designed for fireproof cables. However, that does seem to be holding that nice and neatly in place. And that does have that nice and securely held. Excellent. So that's good. We'll have a look at the next fixing. OK, so let's have a look at our next type of fixing. So this is the spring clip from D-Line. And I quite like the simplicity of this one. It's just a thin piece of wire uh, that's going to be really nice and easy to install. So again, we just get our Dewalt wall dog and we pop it through the hole at the end there. And then it's just a matter of screwing it in. Now, I think with this one, I'll be able to screw it in and then kind of manipulate that over the cable. So let's get that drilled into place. 
So I'll just screw that in until it's nice and tightly bitten into the wall, which it is there. I'm just going to sort of spin that round to make sure it's in the right position. There we go. That's got that nice and tight. And then I think it's just a matter of basically grabbing that little bit of wire there, popping the cable underneath it, and just letting that kind of sprung metal do its job. Yeah, that's just holding that nice and tightly in place there now. So again, that's another type of fixing, fire rated fixing that we can use. And I think that is quite a nice, neat little solution actually. Okay, so now we come on to the thorny issue of the existing cables. Now I've gone to quite a bit of trouble to make sure that my new cable is not going to collapse in the event of a fire, or at least it's not going to collapse prematurely in the event of a fire. However, there's a lot of existing cables here that I think if a fire broke out in, we would run into some trouble. They've been uh, fixed up. Here you can see with these kind of scraps of uh, one mil twin and CPC that have been sort of looped over and hammered into place. I'm not convinced that that's going to give a particularly good or effective uh, fixing when it comes to a fire situation. So uh, we could debate backwards and forwards about whether the regulations are retrospective or not, whether we need to apply them retrospectively or not. Um, however, I've decided that in this installation, I am just going to go to the trouble of spending a little bit of extra time of making sure that the existing cables are not going to collapse prematurely in the event of a fire, mainly because I enjoy sleeping at night. So I'm going to install these D-Line F-clips here. Now these have been designed with kind of a multitude of purposes in mind. So these are partly designed to go inside trunking so I could put a fixing through the little hole there and then bend that up and bend that up so that it gives me uh, a fixing very much like the uh, cable safe clip that we looked at earlier from Illumino Ignis. However, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to use it for another one of its functions and we're going to fold it up in a bit of a specific way. So I'm going to put a bend in it there and then I'm going to put another bend where that hole is and then I'm going to kind of bend this bit over and put a little kick in it there because what I've then done is created this really nice kind of almost like a, a bracket really uh, that I can use to support these existing cables. So I'm just going to push that over the existing cables like so and then it's just a matter of installing the screw into there and getting that fixed in place. So you can see now we've got this F-line clip in place and that's going to help to prevent the premature collapse of this existing wiring in the event of a fire. So I'll pop a few more of these along this run just every so often to make sure that the cable won't drop down and hang down far enough to entangle a firefighter or anyone like that in the event of a fire. Now this F-clip from D-Line is super versatile. It can be kind of uh, molded into lots of different shapes to fit into lots of different circumstances. You can fold it along these lines and it will fit into a certain size of trunking depending on the size of clip that you've got. You can also fold it and use it to hang uh, steel cable ties through in order to give a fire rated fixing perhaps above a ceiling or something like that. So there's lots of options that you can do with this. Uh, but what I'm going to do with this here, again, looking at these existing tails that run up the wall here, obviously they're held really neatly and firmly in place with these plastic clips. However, in the event of a fire, we're going to run into problems with them collapsing prematurely. So I'm going to just kind of mold this into uh, a certain kind of shape, sort of give it this kind of bridge-like feel like so and then that will just sit across there and again if a fire were to break out then we'd be in a strong position. So I'm going to get this fixed on the wall however I don't feel you need to watch me mark drill and fix this again so we'll just do this. And there you can see that the F-clip has been nice and neatly installed. Again, it's not necessarily pressing hard against these. It's not holding them in place. That's what the clips are doing. It's just in the event of a fire, it will stop these from collapsing and hanging off the wall and potentially ensnaring a firefighter. So I think that these clips are absolutely brilliant, very versatile and can be used in lots of different places. I really like those. So there we go. We've installed the supply to our heater from PremSpec using the twin and CPC from Pitax. And we've installed this cable in such a way that it will not collapse prematurely in the event of a fire, meaning that we're not putting the lives of firefighters at risk should a fire break out in this area and they need to enter this space. So make sure you check out some of those solutions that we've looked at and make sure that your installations are just as safe as they can be. So all that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.